Well, good afternoon and welcome to the March 2022 WordPress News Roundup here on iThemes Training. My name is Nathan Ingram. I am the host here at iThemes Training. And every month we take a look across the WordPress ecosystem and bring you the news that is relevant, especially to those of us who are managing websites for clients. So it's all WordPress news and I put a little bit of an angle on it for those of us who are building and managing WordPress sites. So let us get started, shall we? If you're just joining us in GoToWebinar, the chat room is at ithemes.com forward slash chat, ithemes.com forward slash chat. I am dropping in the slide link one more time today. And if one of you kind folks might save that for any latecomers, that would be much appreciated. All right, let's get started, shall we? Uh, with as we uh, the place where we always begin, and that is news from Core, news from Core WordPress. Uh, we talked very briefly in the uh, pre-show chat that the fact that WordPress 5.9.2 dropped last week, uh, the March the 10th. So that happened pretty quickly after 5.9.1, and the reason for that is it addressed a high severity issue. Uh, one bug fix and three security patches. The bug fix was not a big deal, just related to the 2022 theme. And uh, But the patches, one was a big deal, two were medium severity. We'll talk more about those uh, later on under security news. Um, they've also gone back and backported uh, all the WordPress versions since 3.7, just to make sure those old versions of WordPress are more secure. That should have happened automatically, unless you have, for some reason, disabled the default behavior of WordPress, which is to automatically update these minor core patches. Um, and I don't recommend that you change that. That's a good practice to have. So uh, let's move on to the next thing here, which is something that I believe we touched on briefly during the last news roundup. And that is this new core web fonts API. So the web fonts API has arrived uh, it is work that has been merged into the Gutenberg plugin, uh, and it should be there in Gutenberg 12.8, which may release today. Uh, I've got a, I think it's today. It's going to release or next Tuesday. I think it's today. Uh, they're doing all that work inside of Gutenberg, uh, which makes sense because of the full site editing things. Uh, it will support the theme.json. Uh, which allows a theme to define its styling in a in a format that is recognizable theme to theme and plugin to plugin. Also, uh, basically, what this Web Fonts API is all about is a standard way for themes to uh, add in their own fonts. So, um, it, at first, it was also going to include Google Fonts, but that has been removed mostly because I, I, I don't know personally, but I think probably because of the privacy issues related to Google Fonts, perhaps. But uh, it does, it, it supports, right now anyway, local fonts that are bundled with the theme. So in other words, the actual files of the font need to be bundled into the theme to work with this new WordPress core web fonts API. Theme authors can define the font face as a result of that. So it's pretty good. Uh, this is a, goes a long way to standardizing something that uh, probably uh, needs to be standardized. So uh, WordPress is going to include the Google Fonts provider with the Google Fonts as a source in Jetpack. So it's not going to be in core. It's going to be part of the Jetpack plugin. Uh, you can think what you want to about that. Um, but there's a couple of challenges with this new Web Fonts API. The first is that, uh, you know, fonts can be pretty big, right? And so if you're bundling a bunch of different fonts, particularly those that have various uh, weights and variations, uh, themes could really quickly get to that 10 megabyte limit, which is the, the size limit for the WordPress theme directory, the free theme directory. So that could become a problem. We'll see how they handle that. The second challenge is a lot of themes already support Google fonts. And so, you know, I'm not sure how Jetpack's going to work with that and, and whatever. So I'm sure they're going to sort all that out. Cadence, for example, supports Google fonts internally. Uh, and uh, I'm sure Ben and the theme, uh, the, the team at Cadence will uh, ha have this figured out. Uh, but that's coming and it's happening. Likely, this Web Fonts API piece will be included in core WordPress in some form at WordPress 6.0. Uh, so that's what's going on with Web Fonts. Now, while we're on the subject of WordPress 6.0, there is still no targeted date that has been published. It's coming sometime. 
<laughs> in 2022. Not exactly sure when. We don't have a date yet. Um, they are continuing work on phase two of the four-phase Project Gutenberg, which is the customization phase, full-site editing, block patterns, a block directory, and block-based themes. Uh, so that's where the focus is, and that's coming in WordPress 6. Pardon me. Uh, there are the two other phases of Project Gutenberg, Collaboration, which will bring in some really creative ways to co-author content where you have sites that are very content-driven. Uh, and then multilingual, taking um, the ability to, uh, that, that currently only exists in plugins like WPML and making uh, multi-language a part of core WordPress, which is going to be pretty interesting to see how that all works out. So still no date yet for WordPress 6.0. We'll keep you apprised whenever the, uh, the dates on the roadmap actually hit. Hopefully we'll have something for you next month on that. All right, let's move on into news from Gutenberg and see what's going on in the development of the block editor inside the Gutenberg plugin. Gutenberg 12.6 was released back on February the 16th. A few uh, feature enhancements like a new color panel with updated controls, a post author bio and read more block, and the polishing, uh, polishing of the loading states. Uh, more accessibility improvements, that's constantly happening, and other smaller features and bug fixes. Let's have a look real quick at this new color panel. This is actually pretty cool. Uh, clicking on the background, you know, this is pretty straightforward. However, watch what else you can do here. Ah, look, we can now select link colors in the sidebar. And so right there, watch the view posts. It's Well, that's not a very good change. But, ah, look, now you can see it. Uh, you, it will actually change the color of the links in that block. And it's an, it's a really easy to use UI that's now built into Gutenberg. Now, again, it's been a little while, maybe a month since we I've emphasized this. And I think it's important to emphasize periodically. And that is Gutenberg and the block editor. Again, two separate things. Gutenberg is the plugin in which development for the block editor occurs. And then at every major WordPress release, they take all the work that's been done in the Gutenberg plugin and merge that into core. The block editor is what you actually are using to edit pages in core WordPress. So if you're not using the Gutenberg plugin, you're not going to see this new updated color panel. Uh, if you're just using, for example, WordPress 5.9 and the version of the block editor that is included in core WordPress, you won't see these changes. So if you want to see them, use the Gutenberg plugin. However, it is recommended that you do not use the Gutenberg plugin on live active sites because it is very much a beta plugin. Features are added and removed and occasionally there's some weird things that happen. Not much anymore, but especially at the beginning, a lot of weirdness. So it's a development plugin. Uh, so you don't want to probably use Gutenberg on live production client sites. All right, so that was a new color panel. There's also a new author block, which you can see right there. Uh, pardon me, author bio block. So this is more of the full site editing tools where uh, with a block you can import the author's bio that's defined in their user profile onto the post template. You know, it'll pull the author of the post and drop their bio in automatically. Uh, they've also got this new read more block that's been added. Uh, and so uh, there it is. You can click that and it gives you the read more link. So for a grid of posts, that's pretty nice. Uh, something else that's pretty interesting that they've done is uh, in Gutenberg 12.6, they have given you the ability to retain styles when transforming your block. So if we were to take this and uh, turn it into a list, for example, notice that the colors that were defined when it was a, a paragraph block stay put. And that didn't happen before, so it would, it would lose that formatting. So all the styles that have been defined follow through whenever you transform that block into a heading or a paragraph or a list, that sort of thing. Uh, they've also added a new loading spinner, which is kind of nice. See it right there? Um, a new loading spinner when they're doing, uh, it's trying to pull information. So that's kind of a, it's a nice modern looking spinner. I kind of like that. So that brings us to the end of 12.6. And we had uh, Gutenberg 12.7 released on March the 2nd. Number of feature improvements like uh, improving the patterns experience, which it needs, uh, some list view improvements, and uh, changing some front-end HTML. Uh, so let's have a look here. There are pa the patterns now 
that are associated with the area where you are in the editor are now easy to find, much easier to find. So you can uh, click on the inserter and notice you get right there some patterns that show up uh, as suggestions. So that's pretty cool. Makes those patterns a lot easier to deal with. And patterns overall really do make the block editor easier to use. Uh, so that's a good thing. They're trying to continue and iterate making uh, blocks and patterns a lot more uh, usable. So uh, something else along with that is uh, we've talked about this in the past, but theme authors can now highlight patterns that work well with their theme. So uh, adding a pattern field to this theme.json allows the theme authors to suggest those different patterns uh, to the user. So pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a good question from Manu in the chat. Uh, let me do this. This will be a good opportunity to clarify. Uh, so the question is, if Gutenberg updates its features, does Cadence have them as well? So I think we need to clarify what's happening in Gutenberg and what's happening in Cadence, right? So Gutenberg is developing features for the block editor as a whole, okay? So Cadence is going to, you know, if, those, if the features exist in the block editor, Cadence is going to use them. Cadence uses the block editor. So uh, they're really not directly related. Like if Gu Gutenberg updates and how Cadence uses those, they're not really directly related. Cadence doesn't have to change anything to use Gutenberg updates. It just uses the block editor, right? Um, okay. So uh, also there's some list view improvements. So the list view is one of the my favorite features of the block editor. You can drop that down uh, on the left side of the editor using this icon right here. And uh, but now look what you can do. You can actually multi drag blocks and groups. So a shift click will let you select multiple blocks or groups. Watch this again. So we can click, we grab the whole group, we can shift click, grab the other group and drag multiple blocks or groups to a different spot on the page. So that's a really nice usability improvement. Uh, you can also see a uh, when you click a block in the editor, the list view open. So let's see there, there's a column block, but when you click the image, it opens up to show you uh, in the list view exactly where you are. So that's really helpful. I really like that a lot. You can also now with Gutenberg 12.7 add borders to column blocks. Uh, that's really nice, I guess. Uh, so, you know, you can do that now. <laughs> so that's Gutenberg 12.7 continuing iterative development of the block editor. It's good to see. All right, let's move on into some security news, shall we? And let's dig a little bit more into this WordPress 5.9.2 update. Uh, there was a major cross-site scripting vulnerability that was uh, uh, revealed in WordPress 5.9.1 and earlier. Um, it is fixed now in 5.9.2. This it's a it's a serious XSS vulnerability. So that allows an attacker to upload a script directly to a WordPress site if they have uh, if they understand what the exploit is. So it's a big deal, and that was patched as soon as it was found. Um, the the locations of these vulnerabilities anywhere in the WordPress site that allows input, like when you're submitting a contact entry or something like that, uh, you can manipulate what is submitted to perhaps allow a content injection. So normally those inputs are protected by sanitate. Uh, <laughs> this should actually be sanitization. Um, so, you know, if when the input is considered by WordPress, malicious code is often filtered out with sanitization. Uh, but apparently the sanitization wasn't happening in this instance. So it's been around a long time, actually, uh, and um, they fixed it. So that's a, that's a good thing. No, um, no evidence that that vulnerability was exploited, but uh, it's all updated in the latest patch, make sure that, again, your site is updated if it's not already. So, all right, let's move on into what is probably the biggest security news of the last month. And uh, if you are an iTheme Security Pro user and you have the site scan running, which it does by default, uh, you probably got all these emails, right? How many of you, let's hear from you in the chat. Did you get all the emails about Freemius, Ajax, error, problem, something going on with multiple plugins on my site. Yeah. Okay. 
So big time vulnerability. Uh, so it was all related to this service, which is called Freemius. Now, Freemius is something that theme and plugin developers use to make it easier for people or to really um, promote the upgrade of a free product to a pro product. And so you've probably seen Freemius in action on your site. Um, like, you know, when you go to deactivate a plugin, it'll say, tell us why you're deactivating. That's Freemius that's doing that. And it shows up in different places. And so Freemius is a library of code that developers can add into their plugin. Now, what was happening is there was a vulnerability in that Freemius library and developers had to update their plugin with the new version of the library that wasn't vulnerable. Okay, so that's what's going on. But that Freemius framework, uh, what the, the, vulner the vulnerability was included in more than 400 plugins and 25 themes. So huge, huge issue in the WordPress ecosystem. Most of those plugins and themes have been patched at this point. However, there are still some that are out there uh, that are plugins that really aren't very well supported, for example. Um, but super important that you use, this is the beauty of my favorite feature of iTheme Security Pro, which is the version management feature that gives you that beautiful little checkbox that says update uh, vulnerable themes, uh, vulnerable themes and plugins if the the patch exists. So simply clicking that checkbox in iTheme Security Pro, uh, whenever it does its site scan twice a day, if there is a vulnerability and if that patch exists, iTheme Security Pro automatically applies that patch. It's a wonderful thing. Um, and uh, yeah, make sure you're using that if you're an iTheme Security Pro customer. And if you're not an iTheme Security Pro customer, you should be. Uh, it's a great plugin that helps us get around these issues. All right, so uh, probably like me then, you've seen a, a great reduction in the number of those uh, notifications. I don't think we've gotten any now in several days, so hopefully that is behind us. All right, so let's get into our vulnerability roundup four times a month. Every week, Michael Moore gives us a list of vulnerable themes and plugins on the iThemes blog. This is a combination of those things. There are quite a few plugins uh, this month that have no known fix. So if you are using any of these plugins, you need to remove them completely from your site. Better WordPress, Google XML sitemaps, cost calculator. What a really odd name for a plugin. This may be a separate plugin. We may need a, uh, I think we need a, a, an enter here. Cost calculator. I think that's what it is. That's a different plugin. So that's a really weird name for a plugin. Uh, easy embed for HubSpot forms, GD My List, Page Builder, King Composer, Page Builder, uh, Pet Finder listings, RW Divi Gallery, SEO 301 Meta, Simple Quotation, Simple Theme Options, and WP Voting Contest. I don't recognize any of those plugins. They probably have a small footprint. But if you have these plugins on your site, you need to delete them. Simply deactivating a plugin that is vulnerable is not enough. The plugin file is still on your site and can be exploited. So if you have a vulnerability, you have to delete that plugin or theme file completely from your server until it's fixed. Really, it's probably better replace it and use something else. Uh, here's another uh, big list of vulnerabilities that have been patched. So these did have a vulnerability, but they are now uh, patched in their latest versions. I'm going to go through here and just catch some of the big ones that I recognize uh, the Advanced Contact Form 7 database plugin, uh, the 3D Flipbook, uh, Add Rotate, uh, All in One WP Migration, the Amelia Calendar, uh, Bulletproof Security. Let's see. Um, you can kind of take a look here. The Download Manager plugin is a big one. Um, the Countdown Coming Soon Maintenance Mode plugin. Let's see here. Essential Add ons for Elementor, Login Press. Uh, let's see here. Photo Gallery by 10 Web. That's a big plugin. Um, let's see here. Profile Builder, Relevancy, Updraft, Backup Plugin, Users WP, the Zoom Video Conferencing Plugin, White Label CMS, Core WooCommerce. Let's see here. Any more? Uh, WP Event Manager. That is not um, Events Manager by Marcus Sykes. That is WP Events Manager, different plugin. Uh, and then uh, that's about it. So a lot of, lot of plugins, 
All those were patched. Just make sure you're all, you're automatically applying your uh, updates using iTheme Security Pro, or you're keeping your pl uh, your your sites up to date using something like uh, iTheme Sync. Also, some uh, a few more premium plug. Oh, these are premium plugins. Sorry, uh, that have been vulnerable and patched. Fancy Product Designer, WordPress File Upload, WordPress Multi-Site Content Copier, and WordPress Multi-Site User Sync. So those are premium plugins, all patched. And then a few theme vulnerabilities as well. All those, none of those I recognize, all of them are patched in their latest releases. So uh, you can get those vulnerability reports on the blog once a week. All right. So uh, let's move on into some news from iThemes. First thing I'd like to talk about today is uh, there's a new podcast for Cadence. So if you're a Cadence user, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the Cadence podcast, the Cadence Beat. You can uh, take a look there at cadencewp.com slash podcast. They're up to several episodes now. Uh, they're fun little podcasts, not super long. Uh, it's uh, Kathy Zant and uh, Ben Rittner and Hannah Rittner uh, talking about what's going on with Cadence. It's pretty good stuff. Um, really light and fun. I've listened to most of them at this point. And uh, you can find those on your favorite podcast app as well. Also, big news from Cadence. I think we mentioned this in the last Cadence webinar with Ben. They were working on the Cadence map block. And that is now available in the free version of Cadence blocks, version 2.3. So this is a uh, block that brings in a Google map. You can simply type in your location right there. It updates your view. Isn't that cool? You have a, a UI to change up a lot of the settings, such as zoom level. Watch this. Isn't that cool? You can just change the zoom level right there in the block. Pretty nifty. Uh, so this is uh, Google Maps is uh, this one. It's, I do not believe it supports open maps. Uh, also, there's some styling options like changing the map type from road to satellite and so forth. You can also put a filter on the map for the saturate level uh, and how strong the filter is, changing height and width and all those things. Right there, nice UI right there in the block for, um, for Cadence. Uh, let's move on to this month's customer spotlight. Ben B. Ben, are you here? Ben B. in the chat. Ben is the customer uh, spotlight this month. Uh, you can take a look at that and read Ben's profile right there on ithemes.com slash customer spotlights. He has been B in the chat, and he's around quite frequently. Um, yeah, by the way, if you would like to participate in the customer spotlights, Kristen is looking for more participants. Uh, it takes about 45 minutes in a call. We give you $100 in swag and a backlink from ithemes.com to your business site. Uh, that is a high-quality backlink as well. Uh, so just go to ithemes.com slash customer spotlight slash interview questionnaire and uh, get that scheduled with Kristen, and uh, you'll enjoy that. So I know several folks here, I uh, notice, in the chat have done customer spotlights. They've said it's a fun experience, and uh, we'd love for you to be part of that. Okay, uh, our premium event this month. Uh, you folks are stuck with me this month. So we're doing a, uh, a fun little webinar called Behind the Site. So uh, this is our first time trying something like this, okay? And we're going to see how this goes. Uh, it's something that's been requested in the past of me to kind of unpack how on the agency side we've built a site. And so I started at this just being like a technical thing, but then I started thinking, you know, really, what if we, if we like take a slower approach to this and talk about like how we got into this project with the client, how we scoped the project and some of the information architecture and the technical road mapping we did and, uh, and then we actually, you know, how we did some of the tech behind the site. So this ought to be fun, but y'all, okay, it is, we're, this is a test. It's totally a test. It's going to be very much shooting from the hip, um, very interactive. It may crash and burn, I'm just saying, but it'll be fun. We'll, we'll have fun crashing and burning together. Uh, this is brand new, total experiment. We'll see how it goes, okay? So that is coming up March 29th and 30th, so two weeks from today. Uh, it's 1 to 3 p.m. each day, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, also, we have the next two months of premium events up as well. So the April and May events are up for you to see. Uh, both of them are with Lindsay Halsey from Pathfinder SEO. So we have our SEO Basics Workshop in April. 
so this is an intro to SEO, keyword research, content SEO, on-site SEO. Uh, so those are your SEO basics. And then in May, we're going to dig into some more advanced SEO in the SEO Masterclass. So that's about link building, local search. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you can see both of those events right there on these landing pages if you are a member of iThemes Training. All right. Uh, let's see. Coming up on iThemes Training tomorrow for members, Freelance Leap Year Fly 2022 is up. We're on the pricing discussion that's tomorrow at 1 p.m. Office hours every Thursday, as usual. We will be continuing that for the next quarter. So April, May, June, we're continuing office hours every Thursday. And I think we'll keep doing that as long as the questions keep coming in. So if you have a question that you want to answer, I think there's about five questions in queue for tomorrow. So we're starting to fill up. We can usually get to about 12 to 15 questions. Uh, so ask your question if you haven't done so already. We also have a, a webinar coming up on next Tuesday, which is um, write your USP in under an hour. Now, I made a mistake when I set this webinar up and I inadvertently marked it as a members only webinar. And this is open for the public. Uh, and I would strongly encourage you to uh, come to this uh, webinar. So it's uh, my friend Erin Pennings. She is going to be talking about writing your USP, which is your um, my brain just died. Your unique selling proposition. So explaining basically your elevator pitch, who, you know, what you do, who you serve in a very succinct way. She has a brilliant formula for this. It's like a Mad Lib. If you remember Mad Libs filling in the blanks, uh, should be a lot of fun. And, uh, so if you haven't signed up for this one yet, this is open to everybody a week from today. And I would encourage you to sign up for that one and uh, get your USP polished all up. Uh, next Wednesday, we're going to be talking about adding a uh, recapture uh, card abandonment service to a membership site. So if you have a membership site or if you manage a membership site for clients, you'll want to watch this webinar because we're going to talk about how to add this. It's like a cart abandonment type software, but for membership sites. And uh, they say you'll be able to bump your revenue 10 percent with very little work. So. Uh, take a look at that. That's coming up next Wednesday, office hours on those Thursdays, and the next free round, uh, next free webinar is the plug-in roundup coming up April the 5th. All right, so question happened before the pre-show about are we moving away from GoToWebinar? We've been talking about this, and uh, yes, we will be moving to Zoom webinars. So within the next month, I don't have a date yet, but within the next month, We'll be moving away from GoToWebinar and on to Zoom webinars. So Zoom is going to give us a more robust platform that's going to include uh, chat and, very importantly, live captioning. We uh, tried live captioning with Otter AI during our uh, uh, security week last week, the disaster week. And that's great, but it required one of our team members to actually be on so Otter could listen to the live. It was complicated. Uh, so anyway, we want to we want to upgrade our accessibility game, and uh, Zoom is going to let us do that. Now, our goal here is to import existing webinar signups out of GoToWebinar and into Zoom, and hopefully that's going to go without uh, any problems, so you don't have to sign up for anything again. But we'll keep you posted. We're still working out the details, so stay tuned on that. It should be better for everybody. Um, Cheesehead, are you going to use the Q&A and chat in Zoom? Yeah, I think we're going to be, again, we're still making decisions, but likely uh, we're just going to use Zoom chat and everything all built into the one Zoom webinar UI. So should be a simpler thing. We've been doing webinars like this for, I mean, 15 years, right? Some of you have been around that long. How many of you have been around, you know, pre or in 2010 era uh, webdesign.com, even before iThemes training? Yeah, me too. So we've been doing this like this a long time, uh, so it's good to move to a platform that's a little bit, um, a little bit more robust. All right, let's move on into some plugin news, shall we? Uh, there is a new feature plugin for WordPress called Performance Lab. So you may recall that in previous news roundups, I've mentioned the fact that there is a team that has been formed to address um, performance issues in WordPress. We even looked at a graph that showed the overall performance level of WordPress going down as other platforms were going up. And so that's been an issue that has been recognized in the WordPress community. A team of people has come together to address performance in core WordPress. 
and they have created this plugin called Performance Lab. So uh, we'll be doing uh, more of a look at this during the plugin roundup in a couple of weeks, but it's there. It's, it's a feature plugin. And again, let me just circle back around to what a feature plugin is. A feature plugin is like Gutenberg, for example, where uh, these are features that are uh, being developed with the view of having them rolled into core WordPress. So a feature plugin like Performance Lab, they're going to do all the development inside this plugin, and when they're ready, they'll drop all that code into core. Uh, so they'll create a merge request when they're ready, and that will be approved through channels, and then it, that code will be merged into, hopefully, the next version of WordPress. So we'll see how that goes. But you can see what's happening now in this Performance Lab plugin. Um, it's definitely beta testing, so I'm not sure I would run this on a client site, for example. But it, it'll have some different modules that can be individually enabled. I wouldn't look for anything immediately with, like, JavaScript optimization or um, things like that. It does do some interesting things, though, that are helpful, and they're going to gradually be upgrading the, the list of things that uh, Performance Lab will do. So right now, it's going to audit your enqueued assets, meaning the, the CSS and JavaScript loaded on pages. You're at least going to be able at this point, at this point, see a, 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 an audit of all the things that are being loaded. Um, it's going to enable a better WebP support within core WordPress. And then it's going to um, move some of the results into the site health feature. So if you want to support the Performance Lab plugin, use it, offers um, feedback and support questions uh, in those areas of the plugin and leave a review. So here's a quick screenshot of what it looks like. Again, we'll dig deeper into this in um, the plugin roundup coming up in a couple of weeks. All right, for those of you who use or support WooCommerce sites, WooCommerce 6.3 dropped uh, a few weeks ago couple weeks ago, and they uh, introduced something that has been needed for a while, and that is better product filtering by attributes. So this was not really something that was um, offered in WooCommerce. So for example, filtering by color or filtering by size, uh, the way variable products work in WooCommerce was not very easily possible. Uh, so the new uh, WooCommerce 6.3 gives us this new option here under products and advanced, and that is enabling table usage. Use the product attributes lookup table for catalog filtering. So basically, um, up until this point, if you used variable items, meaning it had different sizes, um, shapes, colors, whatever, and you'd make a variable product, you couldn't really search by those. Uh, so they've now created a new table that all this stuff is going to be stored in and all those combinations. So it's going to solve the filtering problem and it's going to, Im should improve performance of WooCommerce uh, automatically. So that's a good thing. And uh, if you support sites like that, give it a try. It's uh, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, let's move on into some news about themes and a uh, great article here on WP Tavern. So, um, Interesting discussion happening there in the comments. Does WordPress need thousands of block themes in the era of full site editing? Uh, it's an interesting discussion here in this article. I don't want to belabor the point. I've got a good summary of it here for you on the slides. Um, you know, do we need all these themes now? It's 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 an interesting question. Uh, does everybody want to customize their site design anymore? You know, what is the place of a theme in a world of blocks? And that has been a, a question that was raised at the very beginning of this whole full site editing discussion. Do we need, you know, what is the role of a theme? Or could we just have a basic core WordPress using a full page pattern directory instead of a theme or modules with patterns that were industry specific? Uh, it's interesting, right? So my take on all of this is this conversation was inevitable. Themes aren't going anywhere anytime soon. And for the foreseeable future, we're going to need a great theme like Cadence to be sort of the framework in which we build a site. Uh, so I need something uh, that's a framework to, you know, define global styling and handle headers and footers and things like that. Uh, and the, there was a question earlier on, is Cadence a full site editing theme? 
And the answer to that question is no right now. And there's a good reason for that. Like full site editing is a, it's a moving target. Uh, they're changing lots of stuff. And if you've tried the full site editing um, header and footer builder, for example, it's not awesome. <laughs> it's, it's like the early days of the block editor. It is not awesome. It's going to get better, but the cadence header and footer builder, for example, is head and shoulders above uh, the full site editing experience. And so until, full, the, until the dust really settles on full site editing, uh, yeah, you're much better with a theme like cadence that gives you all those features without using the core work in progress. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's move into some other news. Uh, it's been interesting to see how the WordPress community globally has uh, come to support all the, the, the things that are happening in Ukraine right now. Um, unique ways. So uh, there's a number of companies that have been spotlighted in this WP Tavern article. I've picked a few of them out. Uh, for example, the, the hosting company Servebolt has offered free hosting to anyone working to help the Ukrainian people on a project. So that they're going to give free hosting. Uh, Jason Coleman from uh, Paid Membership Pro has written a tutorial on how internet businesses can find their Ukrainian customers and email them to see how they can be of help. That's a great article. Uh, individuals within the WordPress community have stepped up. Uh, Inez Van Dyke, who is a WordPress community uh, member, raised over 3,500 euro from the WordPress community, rented a van, and loaded it up with needed items for refugees and drove to Poland. That's awesome. Love it. Uh, the team at Codable has uh, been working on uh, with its developers in uh, Ukraine and Russia to make sure their clients are still receiving services and their developers, everything's going well with them. Uh, one of the most controversial moves was by Namecheap, who terminated service for Russian customers with just six days' notice. They've since extended that deadline just a little bit, but uh, yeah, they just terminated service to anybody in Russia. So that's um, pretty controversial, but uh, they did definitely uh, take a stand on all the things that are happening there. GoDaddy is offering free renewals on any products or services that are expiring within the next 60 days for Ukrainian customers. They've also donated half a million dollars to, to humanitarian efforts and removed the Russian version of their website. Uh, they also have ceased trading in Russian rubles. So they don't accept the ruble uh, in their e-commerce platform. WP Engine is donated to Ukrainian and Polish humanitarian programs. Uh, there's a lot of things that have happened internally with Liquid Web that they're just not publishing, uh, but there's a lot of activity happening internally with Liquid Web and Stellar family of products as well to aid uh, everything happening there in the Ukraine. Uh, it's really sad to see that. Uh, and uh, we have some friends that are directly involved there, so... I'm really sad to see those things happening. All right, uh, there's a great article here on Usable in their blog about the app and web accessibility lawsuits back from last year. It's sort of a roundup of uh, what's been happening in accessibility law. Um, it's uh, This is a great read. If you have customers, particularly e-commerce customers, you really need to uh, have a look at this one. So there are um, the new ADA cases that's the Americans with Disability Act, involving websites, mobile apps, or video content. Uh, they've been increasing at a rate of 10 per day. Uh, 4,055 total as of the publishing of this article. That was a 15% increase in one year over what happened in 2020. So you can see the trend, and it's really starting to spike upward with the number of legal action uh, actions that are happening because of accessibility purposes. Uh, many companies have more than one lawsuit active. Uh, they might have one for their website and second for a mobile app in the accessibility issues uh, inside of it. Um, often there are multiple suits from multiple plaintiffs. So uh, there's a lot happening here. 81% of all ADA lawsuits are against companies with less than 50 million in revenue. So uh, what that tells you is you're never too small to be sued. Um, those of you who've been around for a while, you kind of remember the photo trolls that were going around and trolling websites for photos that may or may not have uh, appropriate licensing. And they would, you know, it, it was really a, um, it was a money grab for attorneys. And uh, that's where this accessibility lawsuit subject matter is heading. I 100% believe in accessibility. I believe we ought to build sites that are accessible. Uh, and so, you know, but there are um, attorneys 
who see this as a, an opportunity to really get damages from companies and make money in the process. Uh, so the top 10 plaintiff firms have filed 75% of all ADA lawsuits. Uh, so yeah, saying that a different way, 75% of all the ADA lawsuits have come from 10 plaintiff firms. Uh, they're preparing 30 cases a month. Uh, this reflects they're not really trying to use the sites and fail. It's a surf buy to find sites to sue. E-commerce sites are by far the biggest target of lawsuits. So uh, three quarters of all of these lawsuits are happening with e-commerce websites. Now, Dave is asking the question, how do we deal with this? It's a great question. Um, we need to be design, you, you need to have some basic understanding of accessibility when you're building a website. Building a website with good accessibility practice is a great start. Uh, and we're looking into some training surrounding uh, accessible design here on iThemes Training uh, at some point this year. I'm still working on some presenters for that. Uh, um, uh, Sal is asking, so do we need to have accessibility software? It's a great question. Um, you can get a good evaluation of your site using the WAVE tool. It's a free tool. It's a browser extension for Chrome, W-A-V-E. Um, however, there are no relief offered by widgets or overlays. So you see all of those uh, companies promoting their overlay to solve accessibility problems. Those don't work, right? Um, they promise to prevent ADA lawsuits, and that's unrealistic. Many of the suits from 2021 list widgets and features, those accessibility widgets and things that are trying to make the site more compatible. They um, list those as a barrier to equal access. And matter of fact, uh, I've even heard that, um, and again, this is just my uh, the things that I've heard in the background. I've heard that some of these plaintiff firms are actually simply searching for sites that are employing those things to use as maybe their first, uh, the, the way to find sites for lawsuits. Uh, so Heather is mentioning a specific one of those overlays. That would be one of these overlays that I'm talking about. Yeah. So the, the widgets and services that say we'll make your site accessible with one click. There's no way that that can work. There's the, the site needs to be built with accessibility in mind. So there you go. Uh, and again, we're, we're, I'm working on uh, some training for this. Hopefully we'll get that to you soon. <laughs> uh, we want to make that a premium event. Uh, so we're trying to get uh, a presenter identified and scheduled for that. All right. Other news. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is such a great, uh, a great headline. Uh, WordPress is now flushing the P and tinkle jokes from core code. Um, you know, so yes, the software that powers 43% of the web today has PP jokes in its code. Yeah, William, you like that? Flushing. We did that on purpose. Uh, so 6,000 lines of code <laughs> in WordPress core uh, refers to PP and Tinkle. Um, yeah, I mean, you got to love it. I mean, it's, it's developer humor, y'all. It's developing humor, uh, developer humor. So uh, string P parts is changing to text parts. Last P to last part P's to paragraphs and tinkle to paragraph. Um, not quite as fun, but definitely more clear. The P string, <laughs> the P string made its first appearance back in 2003, while the tinkle string came along in 2008. Uh, there was a ticket submitted back in 2013 to remove the problematic code, but developers erred on the side of keeping the spirit of WordPress, its humor, and its history alive. Uh, so this is really an inside joke with WordPress developers. Um, but it's part of a series of changes to make the code in WordPress core more inclusive in its language and get rid of these things like PP and Tinkle. Uh, but it's just, this is a, a larger discussion that's happening. For example, back in 2018, a couple of lines were dropped from the Hello Dolly plugin, uh, that plugin that randomly pulls lines out of Louis Armstrong's song. Um, find her an empty lap fellas and find her a vacant knee fellows were deemed to be degrading to women uh, when taken out of context. And I would think like, I'm not sure what context would make that not degrading or, or demeaning. I don't know. Anyway, they took, they pulled those things out 
And, uh, and a lot of people in the WordPress community change their Git repo from master to main as more of a, an inclusive where I'm all for this. It's great. You know, we, we want to, you know, make WordPress, WordPress needs to grow up. So it's, it's a good thing. Anyway. So while P and Tinkle are not really offensive to many, they were deemed immature and uh, not to have a place in uh, modern WordPress. I think we can agree that text and paragraph are a little more clear. So, you know, bye-bye to PP. <laughs> uh, okay, another bit of news uh, that flashed across, maybe you saw this. Did you see the fact that Elementor is now uh, introducing cloud websites? So you may recall way back a couple of years ago when uh, Elementor had that huge influx of venture capital. Somebody on a news roundup might have said this looks like they might want, they may be growing their own SaaS. Uh, and I think that's exactly what they're doing here with Elementor Cloud. So Elementor Cloud is now a SaaS, software as a service, competitor to a full site building platform like WordPress.com, Squarespace and Wix. In other words, uh, instead of building your site on Wix, you could build your site on Elementor. So it would be a whole hosted platform with hosting and the tools and everything using Elementor. Uh, and we'll see what they do with plugin restrictions and all of that, like WordPress.com does. Um, that's where Elementor was heading with this big influx of VC capital in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, so this offering includes uh, hosting on the Google Cloud platform, a CDN from Cloudflare, SSL from Cloudflare, daily backups and custom domains. All the features of Elementor Pro are built in. Um, they're not offering email, except mail sent from the website, transactional email up to 100 per day, which might not be enough if you have a busy e-commerce site. So hopefully they're going to, I'm sure they're going to address with that. Um, they do say you can use most major WordPress plugins. They provide a, 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 compati a compatible list. Um, so you can check that out if you're interested. Um, but unlike other non-WordPress SaaS platforms, you can move your website easily to another host, but then you need to buy a license for all of the things. So you could back up your site and move it somewhere else if you wanted to. So it's an interesting sort of in the middle play here for Elementor. Uh, and just be aware of that because I would imagine you'll start to see advertising about this. Uh, and maybe if you have a client who's in the know, you might get a question about this. So uh, there you go. So one uh, currently $99 a year per site. So interesting. Uh, great article on the iThemes blog this month, uh, the top web design trends for uh, February of 2022. Uh, great article here. We've got a, a pretty good summary of it for you here. Great big text is one of the big design trends. How many of you have seen that big text on web pages? Um, good stuff there. Hidden navigation. Uh, we're designing more and more sites like that uh, using a hamburger menu for the primary navigation. Um, also, you know, having some fun uh, with design, making it a little more childlike and fun. And I, this one I don't get. I see this a lot now also, mismatching color schemes. I mean, I don't know why Why would any person choose that. I don't know why you would choose that color scheme. But it's now a thing, and it's popular. Um, I don't know. Uh, also, these magazine grids, we're seeing more and more of those. Uh, so this is a good article. If you're into web design, read through those design trends, and there's a, a good article that talks through why some of those are popular and how you might be able to use them. Uh, in your work. Several acquisitions have happened. Uh, nothing major, but uh, dashboard access and support me plugins were bought by Trusted Login. Wired Impact's uh, newsletter was bought by Corner Shop Creative. WP2 Static was acquired by Stratic. Now that is an interesting one. Uh, WP2 Static is uh, a um, plugin slash service that allows you to build headless WordPress, which is using... Um, WordPress to kind of build the site, but then it actually just generates a static HTML site. Stratic is a service that does that, so there's some things happening there. Uh, Post SMTP email newsletter acquired by WP Experts. Um, Web Factory's coming soon in maintenance mode plugin was acquired by WP Concern, and password protected email newsletter acquired by the WP Experts. WP Experts are doing some things, uh, they're one to watch. Okie dokie, let's get into some news that's worth a look. Uh, this is a great article on the WP Minute. Um, 
in uh, out with the old, in with the new WordPress. So this is a an article that uh, is really asking the question: Is WordPress pushing freelancers away? So a lot of the growth of WordPress has happened because many of us who use WordPress to build sites for clients have injected a lot of time and money into the infrastructure and into the whole ecosystem of WordPress. Uh, a lot of the growth uh, that WordPress has experienced are people who are building sites for clients. And so this is an interesting article that really asks this question, you know, what's happening? And, you know, with all the new changes in WordPress, what about those of us who've been around a while and are using it to build sites for others? Uh, so a lot of web folks came around in 2009 and 10 when WordPress moved into the, the, the CMS world rather than just being a blog. Then e-commerce took over and membership sites came along. And, you know, in those days, buildings, websites on top of WordPress, you could pretty much do anything. Um, but, you know, how are we old timers? And I, I guess I self-identify with that remark. How do we adjust to the new WordPress? So we're getting rid of the classic editor. The block editors come along with Gutenberg. Um, old school themes are on the outs. Full site editing and block themes are in. Um, what about people who are just starting in the business? Are those changes good or bad to people who are just starting to enter the WordPress world? It's a great question. Uh, so there's more power today in the hands of people who are non-designers. So part of the whole Gutenberg uh, initiative is to give the website owner the ability to easily build more complicated layouts. I mean, I can remember it wasn't too long ago when I had to hand code columns with CSS. Uh, that's a nightmare. <laughs> and I'm glad I don't have to do it anymore. But uh, that's not an issue anymore with Gutenberg, right? With the block editor. Uh, these days, just about every part of the website can be tweaked without ever having to touch code. Uh, so the negative part is a designer can still hand a site over to a client fully uh, customized and consistent, but it can't be locked down. So what do you do with something like this? And what about these agencies who have built, you know, their whole business around WordPress? Um, you know, what do we do in these situations? So, you know, if enough of these solopreneurs like freelancers and small shops like many of us have, if we don't get on board with the new WordPress, is that going to stall growth for WordPress? And could we lose our unchallenged place at the top of the content management game? I don't know. Uh, you might see more forks of WordPress like Classic Press. Uh, that didn't really go anywhere. But, you know, when how many of you remember when Gutenberg was announced? Several folks said, not for me, and forked core WordPress into something called Classic Press. Uh, and it's kind of been crickets for a while. Uh, so, you know, it. It's going to be interesting to see where things go um, and what's going to happen to new people who enter the space. Uh, so ultimately, my take on this is don't sell websites, sell solutions. Um, I started developing websites back in 1995, and I've been through several different phases of tools to build websites for clients. The goal has always been, for me at least, to provide solutions on the web. It hasn't been, I'm building WordPress websites. Uh, WordPress has been the tool that I've stuck with the longest uh, because the community is fantastic. But, you know, if WordPress goes away or goes in a different direction, you know, I, we'll just pivot and do something else. So it's, it's an interesting article. I would highly recommend, you know, if, if you're starring an article or two to read, let this be one of them. It's an interesting discussion. Okay, so a few other articles that popped up during our research this month. The WordPress community designers create the have created a museum of block art. This is an interesting uh, article. 22 pieces of block art and art created by blocks uh, that's there. Uh, a member of the SEO community and her two children were some of those uh, among the casualties in Ukraine. Sad article about Tantiana Parabinas, uh, who was the chief accountant of SE Ranking. It was killed on March the 6th. Uh, SEO Press has added the Index Now support. We've talked about Index Now in the past several months. This is the tool that allow, it's created by Microsoft Bing and uh, Yandex, and it allows your website to proactively notify those search engines that support the Index Now protocol that a change has been made so they can proactively crawl your site. Uh, Google's looking into Index Now. They haven't said they're going to adopt it yet, but uh, that's a good thing. 
uh, a guide to 301 versus 302 redirects. If you don't understand the reason for those two or when you might use both, you probably should, and there's a good article there. All right, uh, just about to wrap up here, but let's stop with some news about WordCamps. There are finally, finally, a number of in-person WordCamps coming up. Uh, WordCamp Geneva is coming up on uh, April the 9th. WordCamp Athens, also on April the 9th and 10th. WordCamp Vienna on April the 23rd. All those are in-person WordCamps in Europe. Uh, WordCamp Europe itself is in Porto, Portugal, June the 2nd through the 4th. That was also currently planned to be in person. Uh, the first WordPress US-based WordCamp is uh, WordClamp Montclair, New Jersey. That is scheduled for June the 25th, and their call for speakers is open uh, as well. So uh, we actually tried to have our WordCamp Birmingham, WP Y'all, uh, be the first back in-person WordCamp, and uh, we're definitely not going to be before Montclair. So not that I'm bitter about that. We had to postpone because of our COVID numbers here. Uh, it was a right decision, but I'm glad to see in-person WordCamps coming back to the United States. WordCamp US is also being planned as an in-person event September 9 through 11 in San Diego, California. So really, really happy to see these in-person events starting to come back. Uh, Sue has a question on, will any of these be hybrid events? I don't know. You'll have to check those individual WordCamp sites and see what they have to say. Uh, I would imagine at least WordCamp US will be, but uh, we'll have to see. Well, that ends our WordPress News Roundup for March of 2022. Hopefully you found a few items that were of interest to you. Make sure you grab the slides. If you didn't see those, I'm going to drop the link in the uh, chat again. If you're watching this on the replay, you can click the download handout button down below the video and uh, grab all those slides and follow the links. Hope you have a great rest of the day. I'm back tomorrow for members with uh, Fly 2022 talking about pricing. And until then, have a great evening. See you back here tomorrow on iThemes Training where we go further together.